Hello again. This is part two now of Touch Not My Anointed. Now in the first part of this video, we left off at verse 16 in 1st Chronicles chapter 16, which is verse 9 in Psalm 105. Okay? Uh, if you do not watch this first, the first part of this video, going to be lacking in a couple parts of uh, the build-up to this, okay? We have to go through these steps to shew and to prove the point of what we are seeking to discover, okay? <clears throat> so, as I said in the previous video, we left off in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 16, oh, beg your pardon, and... Psalm 105, verse 9. Let us read now from verse 16 on to verse 19. I'm going to be reading in uh, 1 Chronicles 16. You follow along in your authorized version of the scriptures to verse 12 in Psalm 105. Okay? <clears throat> Picking up from verse 17. And hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. And you look over here on to verse 10 in uh, Psalm 105, says the same thing. Okay? <clears throat> verse 18. Saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of of your inheritance. And also on to uh, Psalm 105 verse 11, saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. Now, verse 19 in um, uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, as well as verse 12. Now, these are very different. Okay? These are very different one from another. Check this out. <clears throat> when ye were but a few, ye, plural, more than one. Verse 12 in Psalm 105. When they were but a few, when they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers within it. Verse 19 in First Chronicles 16. When ye were but few, even a few and strangers in it. <clears throat> Very different. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to 1 Samuel now. 1 Samuel chapter 21. In the previous video, we looked at 2 Samuel 21 verses 1 on to verse 9. In this, we will be looking at First, uh, First Samuel, chapter 21, verses 1 on to verse 9, okay? First Samuel, chapter 21, verses 1 on to verse 9, okay? Key thing to note, in verse 19 in First Chronicles, chapter 16, it says, when Ye, plural, more than one, were but few, even a few, and strangers in it. While in verse 12, in Psalm 105, it says, When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few, and strangers in it. Okay? First Chronicles chapter 16 here is addressed unto a nation. While Psalm 105 is addressed unto an individual. The individual. The nation. Okay? <clears throat> First Samuel 21, verses 1 on to verse 9. Then came David to know to Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David, and said unto him, why art thou alone, and no man with thee? <coughs> and 
And David said unto Ahimelech, the priest, The king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee. And I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. <laughs> now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, of what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hollow bread. If the young men, implying more than one, have kept themselves at least from women. <clears throat> and David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out. And the vessels of the young men are holy. And the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest, so the priest gave him hollow bread, for there was no bread there but the shoe bread. That was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day detained before the Lord. And his name was Doeg, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. When David took off from Saul, okay, and if you were to read chapter 20, you would see about how he and Jonathan, David, that is, made a covenant between each other and whatnot. And that led on to King David sparing Mephibosheth, okay? All right, but when David departed, they were very few. <clears throat> Verse 19 in First Chronicles, uh, chapter 16. When ye were but few, ye, pure uh, is plural, even few and strangers in it. Okay, very few. Now go to 1 Samuel chapter 22. Verses 1 and 5. David therefore, therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Abdullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. And in comparison to the army of Israel and to the, that of the army, say, of the Philistines, they were what? <clears throat> when ye were but few, even a few, and strangers in it. Strangers in it. Okay? Verse 3. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab. And he said unto the king of Moab, strangers in it, meaning, verse 19 in 1 Chronicles 16, when ye were but few, oh, say about 400 men, even a few, and strangers in it. Now, they were right here in verse 3, and David went thence, to Mispeh of Moab. And he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold. Depart, get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Hereth. Now, when he was in Moab, <clears throat> number one, they were few. And the king of Moab, okay, in Mizpah, that was, that was not their land. Okay? They were strangers in that land because there was the king of Moab. See, <clears throat> King Saul was a stepping stone onto King David, 
See, God's anointed. King Saul was also anointed. Okay? But where it says here, when ye were but few, 400 men, even a few and strangers in it. The land of Moab, they were strangers in. Okay? That wasn't their native land. Okay? You get it? The king of Moab. Because King David, who was not king yet, he was anointed to replace Saul, obviously. Yes. But he was not king yet because King Saul, the king of Israel, was still reigning. See? Okay? And now, go to chapter 23, verses 13, on to verse 14. Okay? Verses 13 on to verse... Uh, let's read on to verse 15. In First Samuel chapter 23, verses 13 on to verse 15. Then David and his men, which were about 600, grew over some time, yes, but still few, even a few, see. <clears throat> then David and his men, which were about 600, arose and departed out of Keilah and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah, and he forbore to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness and strongholds, and remained in the mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm? Hmm. Let's continue. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. Okay, and let's remember one thing here, okay? <clears throat> Go back now to 1 Samuel chapter 21. We will be reading verses 10 on to verse 15 now. In 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 10 on to verse 15. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath, okay? The king of Moab, the king of Gath, okay? Not the lands that were taken yet of Israel, okay? In Joshua, in the book of Joshua, yes, but they had their king of Moab and the king of Gath, okay? Because remember, when it came to the book of Judges, the Israelites had not done all all that the Lord had said to do, okay? So these nations were left to try the children of Israel, remember? Okay? Remember that. <clears throat> Verse 11, And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land, meaning the land of Israel? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. So people obviously had heard of King David, right? Or of David. He was not officially king yet, okay? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Now, this was something that David, I don't think, really needed to do, okay? Because we saw earlier that the Lord delivered him out of Saul's hand, okay? Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm, okay? <clears throat> then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, you see, ye see this, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of mad men, that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Interesting, huh? So, verse 19 in First Chronicles chapter 16. When ye were but a few, 
Ye plural, more than one. David's men were very few at the very beginning, weren't they? And they went around in uh, lands where they were strangers in. Okay? Remember that. Remember that because there's the king of Gath and there was the king of Moab. Okay? Remember? Now in, uh, <clears throat> now in uh, verse 12 here, in Psalm 105, when they were, when they were but a few men in number, yea, very few and strangers in it. Now in the previous video, we had already read uh, Genesis chapter 12. But we're going to refresh our memories here and read verses 10 on to verse 20. Okay? <clears throat> Genesis chapter 12, verses 10 on to verse 20. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. And the famine was grievous in the land, and it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Very similar in what David did, changing his behavior. Uh, I don't believe that Abraham needed to do this, but he did it anyway. Okay, let's continue. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman, that she was very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abram well for her sake, and he had sheep and oxen and asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Was not Pharaoh the king of Egypt? Hmm? <clears throat> and Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore, behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, and his wife, and all that he had. Okay? Said that the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house because of Abram and his wife. Okay? Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Okay? Okay? So when it says here in Psalm 105, verse 12, when they were but a few men in number, meaning unto the house of Abraham, okay, the individual, okay, yea, very few, and strangers in it, okay? Do you see that? Psalm 105 is addressing the individual. First Chronicles 16 is addressing the nation, okay? Do you see that? Okay? Now, let us now read verse 20 in uh, 1 Chronicles 16. And we will also look at um, verse 13 in Psalm 105. Verse 20 in 1 Chronicles 16. And when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people... Verse 13 in Psalm 105. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. They're different. But it is still saying the same thing. Because here in verse 19, where it says, When ye were but a few, even a few, and strangers in it. Verse 20. The comparison is being made 
in 1 Chronicles 16 between the men of David, because it was David who was reciting this psalm in 1 Chronicles 16. He is making the comparison of his small beginnings of his kingdom onto that of Abraham. That is why even though verse 20 and verse 13 in 1 Chronicles 16 and Psalm 105 are different, but yet they are pointing onto the same thing. Because David is making the comparison of when they, his people, when ye were few, the nation of Israel, okay, with, with his establishment of the kingdom, when he was going around in the wilderness and stuff, he was making the comparison of them when they were few, when ye were few, unto when Abraham and his house were few. Okay? He's comparing them. All right? That's why we're going to look at the same scriptures on these two verses, even though they are different. Do you follow me? Okay? Go to Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. David is comparing when he says, when ye were but few, okay, this is King David giving this psalm, okay, all right, unto the nation of Israel. Well, in Psalm 105, it is addressing the individual. Genesis chapter 20. Verses 1 on to verse 7. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur, and so journeyed in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. Again, Abraham didn't need to do this, I don't believe. Okay? Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Hold up. Let's continue. And Abraham said of Sarah, he, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man for the woman which thou hast taken. For she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister, and she, even she herself, said he is my brother? In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. How would Abimelech have known this if the law of God wasn't written in his heart already? This is before the law. How did he know these kind of things? You go figure that one out yourself. Let's continue. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. If he had done that and gone and lied uh, laying with uh, Sarah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Verse 7. Verse 7 is a very important verse. Hinge this. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. This, by the way, is the very first appearance of the word prophet. And look unto whom it is attributed. You go ahead and fact check me. This is the first, the law of first mention. Okay? Yes, I know the law of first mention isn't in the scriptures, but when uh, usually a word is defined by the first time it appears. Usually. And this is the very first time that prophet appears within the authorized version of the scriptures. And who is it attributed unto? 
I think you get my point. Let's continue. Rereading that. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Oh boy. Oh boy. Now, go to Genesis chapter 46. Genesis chapter 46, verses 1 on to verse 7. Beg your pardon. Genesis chapter 46, verses 1 on to verse 7. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father, Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night. And he said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. And Jacob rose up from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father, and their little ones, and their wives, in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him in, to carry him. And they took their cattle and their goods, which they had gotten in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his seed with him, his sons and his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters, and all his seed brought he with him into Egypt. Okay? And now let's look at verse 20 again in uh, 1 Chronicles 16. And when they went from... And when they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people. Okay? And verse 13. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. Wandering. Okay? Wandering. Okay? Before the kingdom was established in the hand of David. Okay? King David and his men went throughout the land as strangers going here and there and also the sons of Israel Jacob who was of the lineage of Abraham Isaac and Jacob okay because remember it is in Isaac thy seed is called Esau have I hated uh, uh, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated okay okay Showing that the small beginnings, they're small beginnings, okay? And when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people, verse 13, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, you see the differences, okay? You see the differences. Now, now, let's read verses 21 on to verse 22 in 1 Chronicles chapter 16. And you follow along in from verses 13, uh, from verses 14 on to verse 15 in Psalm 105. Okay, now, now incidentally, these read the same. But here we go. Okay, here we go. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, like the king of Gath, the king of Moab, and Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, the king of Gath, the king of the Philistines, okay, on the behalf of David, the king of Moab, also for David, Pharaoh, for Abraham, and also Jacob, okay, when they went down there, Pharaoh was 
treated Jacob and um, Joseph very well, didn't he? In Genesis, until Exodus and new Pharaoh came up, new king of Egypt, that kind of thing. Okay? Okay? He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. Remember what we looked at in Genesis chapter 20, verses 1 under verse 7? How he reproved Abimelech, who is a king. And now, saying, verse, 21, uh, verse 22, Touch not mine anointed. Oh, excuse me. And do my prophets no harm. Touch not mine anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Christ means anointed one. Okay? That's what Christ means. Anointed one. And anointed, as we are going to see, is relevant unto a king being anointed. And as far as do my prophets no harm, we'll get to that. Okay? Now, go back to Genesis chapter 20. Go back to Genesis chapter 20. Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Genesis chapter 20. We will now be reading verses 8 on the verse 18 in Genesis chapter 20. See how he did that? Genesis chapter 20, verses 8, on to the close of the chapter. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears. And the men were sore afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee? That thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin. Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet indeed she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house, hello, that I said unto her, This is the kindness which thou shalt shew unto me at every place whither we shall come. Say of me, He is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Here's the thing about the covering, ladies. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes. Because Sarah was Abraham's wife. Meaning, don't mess with another man's wife. Unto all that are with thee, and with all other. Thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bear children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. He approved kings for their sakes. Okay? Now, go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Okay? 1 Samuel chapter 2. First Samuel chapter 2, verses 2. 10, uh, verse 10 and verse 35. Okay, we're going to look at one verse references, okay? <clears throat> Exodus 
Actually, let's read verses 9 and 10 in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. And he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. Of his anointed. And now, looking at verse 35 in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Uh, when um, Eli is rebuked, we will read verses 35 on to verse 36. Uh, let's read verses 34 on to verse 36, okay? And this shall be a sign unto thee, that shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophini and Phinehas. And one day they shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful priest, that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thine house, referring unto Eli, shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and for a morsel of bread, and shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest's offices, that I may eat a piece of bread. Hmm, okay? Now, First Samuel chapter 10, one verse. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head. Whose head? Saul, first king of Israel. And kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his in Inheritance, anointed. The king is anointed to be what? Captain over his inheritance. We see the tie-in, anointed with the king. See, okay? Okay? Now today we have the anointing, which is referred to the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Lord is that spirit, the Holy Ghost, that dwells within you of the church of the living God who are saved, born again, and converted. Okay? But in the context of what we're looking at, this anointed is referring on to who? Huh? Okay? Now, 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16 Verses 6 on to verse 13. And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me, before him. Now this is uh, after the Lord had rejected Saul from being king. And he saw and sought him a man after his own heart. Okay, and sent Samuel on to the house of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, okay, to see who the Lord's anointed truly was. Okay, that's the backstory. Okay, let's continue. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, the outer appearance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, here's the definition of countenance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. 
And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, meaning Jesse, Oh, oh, by the way, <laughs> there remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come thither, or come hither, excuse me. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and with all of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Oh. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the capital S, Spirit of the Lord, came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Very quickly. Verse, six, uh, verse 14. But the capital S spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. See, eternal security was not there under the dispensation of the law. Okay? Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and the Lord allowed an evil spirit to come upon Saul. We're going to get to this in another video that uh, brother suggested unto me. We're going to get into that uh, in greater detail later in another video. Okay? Do you see so far about Touch Not Mine Anointed? Oh, we ain't done by a long shot. Let's continue. Now go to 1 Samuel chapter 24, verses 6 on the verse 10. 1 Samuel chapter 24, verses 6 on to verse 10. <clears throat> oh, not 25, Brad. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> 1 Samuel chapter 24, verses 6 on to verse 10. Talking about Saul, okay? Saul the anointed of the Lord. Okay? He was still the king. Okay? And um, let us read. This is when King Saul went into the cave and covered his feet. Okay? Use your imagination what he was doing. We won't get into that. Picking up at verse 6. Okay? And one of the guys said to him, Hey, here's Saul. Let's do something to him. So King, uh, so King David, excuse me, David cut off a part of Saul's skirt privily. And then his heart smote him, okay? Picking up at verse 6, on to verse 10. And he said unto his men, the, this is David talking of King Saul. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My lord the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Samuel, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt? Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord had delivered thee today into mine hand in the cave. And some bade me kill thee, but mine eye spared thee. And I said, I, get a load of the gravity of this. I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Okay. Okay? 
Now, go to 2 Samuel chapter 1. 2 Samuel chapter 1, verses 14 on to verse 16. 2 Samuel chapter 1, verses 14 on to verse 16. Now, this is when the one dude came to um, King uh, to King David saying, Hey, I saw Saul, and I, I, I killed him, and here's the stuff. You know, thinking to have received something. Check out David's response here in 2 Samuel chapter 1, verses 14 on to verse 16. And David said unto him, How wast thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? And David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head. Now, I keep this in mind. For all those who reject our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head. For thy mouth has testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. Okay? All right? Now, 2 Samuel chapter 2, verses 4 and verse 7. <clears throat> and the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, that the men of Jabesh Gilead were they, were, were they that buried Saul. And David sent messengers unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, and said unto them, Blessed be ye of the Lord, that ye have shewed this kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. And now the Lord shew kindness and truth unto you, and I also will requite you the, this kindness, because ye have done this thing. Therefore now let your hands be strengthened, and be ye valiant, for your master Saul is dead. And also the house of Judah have anointed me king over them. Talking about King David. Okay? And we already saw how Samuel had already anointed King David. Okay? Do you see? Now, 2 Samuel chapter 3. 2 Samuel chapter 3. Second Samuel chapter 3, one verse, talking about King David, when um, the sons of Zariah killed Abner, or yeah, Abner, the son of Ner, okay? Verse 39 in 2 Samuel chapter 3, and I am this day weak, this is King David talking, Though anointed king. And these men, the sons of Zariah, be too hard for me. The Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Okay? And now, 2 Samuel chapter 5. 2 Samuel chapter 5. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hold. Okay? And if we were to continue reading... David smote the Philistines, okay? Because he was the anointed of the Lord, the king over his people, see? And when the Philistines heard it, that they had anointed David king, they went up against him. But David smote them. Why? 
Verse 22 in Psalm, uh, 1 Chronicles 16, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. And in the same in verse 15 in Psalm 105, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Okay? And now, 2 Samuel chapter 19, 2 Samuel chapter 19, verses 10 under verse 21. Second Samuel 19, verses 10 on to verse 21. Uh, actually, let's read, begin at verse 9, okay? And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies, and he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines. And now he is fled out of the hand, land for Absalom. And Absalom, who we, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing back the king? Now they anointed Absalom, yes. Yes, they did. But the anointed of the Lord was King David. Okay, Absalom came to the throne temporarily as judgment against King David in that he messed around and sinned with Bathsheba. Okay, you can read about that in, uh, what is that, uh, chapter 11 and, verse, and chapter 12 in 2 Samuel here. Okay, they anointed Absalom. The Lord allowed Absalom to do that. But he was not the anointed of the Lord. See. Verse 11. And King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priest, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house? Seeing, seeing the speech of all Israel has come to the king, even to his house. Ye are my brethren. Ye are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king? And say ye to Amasa, Art thou not of my bone and of my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if thou be not captain of the host before me continually in the room of Joab. And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word unto the king, Return thou and all thy servants. So the king returned and came to Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal to go to meet the king, to conduct the king over Jordan. And Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was of Bahurim, hasted and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him. And Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him, and they went over Jordan before the king. And there went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. And Shimei the son of Gera fell down before the king as he was come over Jordan. And he said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did perversely. The day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the first, come the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abiashai the son of Zariah answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this because he cursed the Lord's anointed? Let's read verse 21 or verse 22. And David said, what have I to do with you, ye sons of Zariah, that ye should this day be adversaries unto me? Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel. And of course, under the reign of Solomon, Shimei, who threw rocks at King David 
and called him and said, come out, come out, thou bloody man. Okay. While David had his head covered, walking barefoot, he cursed the Lord's anointed. And at that time, he was not put to death, but he was put to death in the reign of Solomon because Shimei disreg uh, disregarded the uh, what uh, King Solomon had said. It's like, hey, you leave this certain area and go and then come back, I'm going to kill you. And of course, Shimei did that. See, okay? So a recompense was made upon Shimei, not at the moment, but eventually. See, okay? Now, as far as this thing of the prophet, uh, looking at verse 22 in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Remember Genesis chapter 20. Go back to Genesis chapter 20 again. One verse, you have to see this. Genesis chapter 20, verse 7. Now therefore restore the man his wife. Talking about Abraham. For he is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee. And thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Okay? The first mention of a prophet is of who? Abraham. But what about David? Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Verse 30. Just one verse. Just one verse. Uh, let's read verse 29 on to verse 31 in Acts chapter 2. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, David that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, King David was considered a prophet? And knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of thy loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seen this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Verse 32, this Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. So Abraham and King David were both considered prophets. Oh, really, you don't say. But, oh, oh, we're not done on this one yet. Go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Now, you, you got to remember, too, Within the scriptures, we do not have the details of how the prophets died. But we have evidence that they killed the prophets. We're going to look at that. We are going to look at that. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 10. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Ju Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, Onto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, 
Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my, put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Okay? And now go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. There are many examples of this that we can look at. We are just looking at these obvious ones. Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that hath rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this day. For they are impudent children, and stiff-hearted. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And they, whether they will hear... Ah, what, what happened there? Oh, excuse me. And they, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their faces, at their look, uh, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, and hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was written. Uh, I, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there was written therein lamentation and mourning, lamentations and mourning and woe. Okay? Now, now, Ezekiel chapter 3. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go. Speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, Go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto me, unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me, for all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, 
though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears, and go get thee to, the, to them of the captivity, unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear, or whether they will forbear. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from the, his place. I have, heard, I have heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another, the noise of the wheels over against them, and a noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Aviv, that dwelt by the river of Kibar. And I sat where they sat, and remained there astonished among them seven days. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hands. Again, Brother Brian touched on this in one of his videos. Instruction in righteousness, yes, doctrinally, this does not apply for us today. Okay? This instruction in righteousness, it's there. Yes, doctrinally. This is under the law, pertaining on to the Jews. And remember, under the law, it was faith and works. Eternal security was not there. Okay? Got to remember that. Let's continue. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Works. Let's continue. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. And how many have been duped into thinking that this is applicable for us today doctrinally. Think about that. Instruction and righteousness, yes. Doctrinally, bleep. let's continue. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that he sin not, uh, nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. Deliver thy soul. Because the circumcision made without hands was not there yet. Okay? Body and soul are connected. Okay? until the circumcision made without hands, okay? That's why we can eat pork today, because the circumcision made without hands is there. During this time, in this dispensation, it was not, okay? Let's continue. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee, then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, as the glory which I saw by the river of Kibar, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered into me, and set me upon my feet, and spake with me, and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thine house, but thou, son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. And I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth, that thou shalt be dumb, and shall not be to them a reprover, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, 
And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear, and he that forbeareth, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. So, touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Okay? Mine anointed, referring unto the king, my prophets, no harm. Uh, Abraham, King David, also the prophets, okay? Okay? Do you get it? This is applicable doctrinally in the Old Testament under the law. Okay? Because now, go to 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. We're going to look at two verses. Now, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Okay? Now, the prophets were used of the Lord to speak his message on to the people. And the anointed there is referring on to kings. Okay? Okay? But did this warning, did people really adhere to it? Okay? Did they really adhere to it? Now, this warning in the scriptures about that is what God has said. And amen. You touch the Lord's anointed. Look what King David did. Okay? And you do the prophet's harm. Oh, boy. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 4. Actually, let's read... Yeah, let's just read verse 4. This is talking about Obadiah when he hid a, a hundred prophets of the Lord in a cave when Jezebel was seeking to uh, cut off all the prophets of the Lord. Verse 4. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Jezebel was seeking to cut off the prophets of the Lord. Okay? Look what happened to Jezebel, by the way. Okay? And also verse 13 in uh, Kings, uh, for, uh, 1 Kings 18, verse 13. Again, was it not told my Lord, speaking unto Elisha, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water? And again, what happened to Jezebel? She was trampled underfoot by King Jehu, and the dogs came and ate her up and deposited uh, Jezebel as dung uh, across the land, so that it could not be, so that she could not be buried, so it could be said, "This is Jezebel." Okay, Jezebel met with a horrible end. Was it instantaneous? No. But yes, judgment did come upon her. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you have to remember, this is under the dispensation of the law. Okay? And the warning is valid. Touch my, not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. What happened to Jezebel? Okay? Okay? Now 2 Kings chapter 9. 2 Kings chapter 9, one verse, verse 7, okay? <clears throat> verse 7 in 2 Kings chapter 9. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and that the blood and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of 
Jezebel. This is when Elisha anointed Jehu to do that, to uh, wipe out the house of Ahab, okay? Which I just mentioned to you, okay? Okay? And now also go to Nehemiah. We're looking at a bunch of one verse references in this one. As, uh, as rather in the first one, we went through a lot of scriptures. Still going through a lot of scriptures. But Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 26. <clears throat> Nehemiah chapter 29, verse 26. Nevertheless, when nevertheless they were disobedient and rebelled against thee and cast thy law behind their, their backs and slew thy prophets which testified against them to turn them to thee and they wrought great provocations. Okay? So they killed the prophets. And look what happened when they did that. Okay? Meaning, amen. God fulfilled this, and do my prophets no harm. What happens if they did? <laughs> okay? And now, go to Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. One verse. Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 30. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 30. In vain have I smitten your children. They receive no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. Talking about the children of Israel who killed the prophets that were sent unto them. Okay? Okay? Now go to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23, which is still doctrinally within the Old Testament until the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Matthew chapter 23. Verse 37 on to verse 39. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Look at verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. Okay? And now go to Luke, chapter 13. Luke, chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. See, God said, Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Okay? Warned through the scriptures and the Psalms and right here in First Chronicles. Okay? They were warned. But did they hearken to that warning? Remember, they hateth him who rebuketh in the gate that they take not shame. Okay? Luke chapter 13, verse 34. Again, the same thing, virtually. Verse 34 on to verse 35. Actually, actually, let's read verses 32 on to verse 35 in Luke chapter 13. And he said unto them, Go ye. And tell that fox, talking about Herod, okay? Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, 
and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow, and the day following, for it cannot, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered my thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not? Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and verily I say unto you. Ye shall not see me, ye shall not see me, until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Okay? Okay? And go to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. <laughs> Acts chapter 7. Verse 51 on to verse 53. After Stephen had given the rundown onto the children of Israel, you know, after he has said all these things, then he rebukes them. Acts chapter 7, verse 51 on to verse 53. Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? Hmm? And of course, now for us today, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Where are we? Where are we? Okay. <clears throat> Verse 14. On to verse 16. In First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14 on to verse 16. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Because why? They killed the prophets. The prophets. Okay? Now, go to Matthew chapter 10. Go back to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10 verses 22 on to verse 24. Now you got to remember... People who will, will use this today will use it to defend themselves. Okay? Touch not the Lord's anointed. Touch not mine anointed. Or touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And they use that as a defensive mechanism when they are questioned. Okay? And they will go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1 and say, uh, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. Now, what about when Paul rebuked Peter, who was an elder? Okay? What about that? Is that a contradiction? No. No. What if an elder is in sin, like Peter was, and Paul rebuked him publicly? But while in his rebuke, he entreated him as a father, didn't he? 
with respect and courtesy unto Peter. Okay? That's what that's talking about. But when you got someone today trying to tie 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1 into this, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm, trying to blend them together, ah, -ah! This is uh, this right here in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 22, and in Psalm 105, verse 15, doctrinally, it was for, it was under the law in a different dispensation. Okay? And besides all of that, did that keep the children of Israel under the law, killing their own prophets? No. It didn't. But what happened as a result? Okay? And you have to remember, God is not revealing new revelation today, people. He is revealing truth through the scriptures, and hence we prophesy today in this dispensation, speaking the revealed, finished Words of God, the authorized version of the scriptures. The Old Testament prophets are not in operation today in this dispensation. Because we have the finished, complete word of God. Okay? And we who speak the word of God, the Lord speaks through us, of course, but we who preach and teach the word of God are speaking the words of the Lord unto you, the scriptures. See, there are no Old Testament prophets today. God is not revealing new revelation outside of what he has already revealed the scriptures. And you see, when you got someone blending 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1, and Psalm 105, verse 15, and the same with uh, 1 Chronicles 16, verse 22, no, not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? <coughs> there are no Old Testament prophets today. God has revealed through the scriptures. Okay? There, he's not revealing new revelation. Okay? He's not. He has already revealed unto us what we need to know. The authorized version of the scriptures. Do you get it? So hence, doctrinally, this does not apply for us today. Okay? But there again, what happens when someone messes around and goes after the Lord Jesus Christ? Hmm? But you'll also have to remember that the history of the church of the living God is one of what? Persecution. The history, for example, of the prophets is also that of persecution. Matthew chapter 10, verses 20 on to verse 24. Oh no, excuse me. Verses 22 on to verse 24. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. For another dispensation he's referring to. You and I today in this dispensation, we don't have to endure to the end to be saved uh, of anything. If you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that spirit dwelling within you, you're going to heaven. Okay, you're sealed unto the day of redemption. The redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away. Okay? But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel, Till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. Let's keep reading. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord, as his Lord. 
If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his house? Okay? Okay? And also to Mark chapter 13. See, because this is where the Pentecatholic, care Catholic comes in and saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. These wicked devil charismatic Pentecatholics think that they are Old Testament prophets revealing new revelation that contradicts scripture and is outside of scripture. No, 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 no. <coughs> no, 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 no. Okay? And they will say, hey, uh, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. See, they're applying something that is for another dispensation, trying to apply it for themselves today to protect their own backside. Do you see? Okay, do you see? Now, Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. We will begin at verse 9 on to verse 13. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to the councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations, but when they shall lead you and deliver you up, Take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, oh, excuse me, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now brother shall, be, shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son. And children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So the Lord was telling us, uh, and this was before the crucifixion. The Lord was saying, you're going to be hated of all men for my name's sake. Look what's happening today. You preach the true Jesus Christ, God our Father, of the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures. People are going to hate you. But you preach the son of perdition, oh, excuse me, the modern Jesus of these church building and of all these professing Christians, they're going to like that because their Jesus doesn't have a standard. Their Jesus doesn't judge you, right? Yeah, yeah. And now uh, we don't need to look at in Luke, but uh, go to John 15. Now, John 15, John chapter 15, John chapter 15, <laughs> verses 18 on to verse 21. If the world hates you, Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their, their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. Okay? Okay? Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. You know, these wicked devil, uh, care Catholic, Pentecatholics, the prosperity, word of faith, twits, okay? 
God doesn't want you to suffer. God wants you to be rich and wealthy and wise and all this stuff. Yeah. And they say, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Thinking that they are trying to tell you that they are Old Testament prophets. Okay. What is the true life of those who are of the church of the living God? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8, on to verse 16. Now ye are full, now ye are rich. <laughs> ye have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God hath set forth the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. How, uh, 16. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made of the we are made as the filth of the world, and are the offscuring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you. But as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand, uh, though for though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. And that's not talking about you Catholic stuff. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me, because Paul was our example for us today in this dispensation, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But a Greek is a Gentile, okay? Okay? And these wicked prosperity preacher twits, yeah, yeah. Don't think so. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 11. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, <clears throat> and Timothy our brother, <clears throat> unto the church of God, which is in Corinth with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer. Or whether we be com comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. Okay? Get a load of that. Get a load of that. Okay? For we would not, brethren, have you ignorance of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, and so much that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, 
that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. So see, suffering for standing for the scriptures, for preaching the true Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, of the authorized version of the scriptures. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be hated. Okay? And praise the Lord for it. Praise the Lord for it. it means you're doing something right, brother, sister. Comprende? And now, same chapter, let's read from verses 16. Uh, where, where, what was this? What was this? Oh, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Excuse me. Excuse me. Misreading my notes. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're getting there. Told you this was going to be big. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 16 on to verse 33. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 16 on to verse 33. I say again, let no man think me a fool. If otherwise, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Of boasting. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. Think about these Catholics that Brother Brian talked about. These care Catholic Pentecatholics who glory in flesh, who glory in the things of the world. Okay? Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I, saw, I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have, I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, not the buildings, the people, the bodies of people. Okay, not the buildings. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Arteus, the king kept the city of the Damascusines with a garrison desirous to apprehend me. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. And now let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Not 1 Timothy, excuse me. 
2 Timothy, chapter 3. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. They're here, aren't they? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, which is idolatry. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, Unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janais and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, affl afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, and at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. What about these charismatics? Your, your televangelists. What about some of these Bethlehems? Yeah. Living godly in Christ Jesus. Huh, there's, a, there's a promise for you, boy. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned, and learned them, excuse me, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, thank you, brother, unto all good works. So you see, persecution comes to those of us of the Church of the Living God, okay? It does. The warning that is in First Chronicles and in Psalm 105 was pertaining on to the kings of Israel and the prophets, which were both Abraham and David, okay, but also the prophets of what you see in the scriptures, okay? But we have also seen that they killed the prophets, okay? But what happened as a consequence? But also you have to remember that the Old Testament prophets are not here today like the Charismatics, the Pentecatholics will have you to believe. Okay? And to blend 1 Timothy 5 verse 1 with that when you got some well-fed Catholic preacher 
saying, don't touch the man of God, leave his young ones well, you got judgment coming down to your house, or whatever. Trying to blend the two, uh, 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 uh. This was specifically for under the law, okay? This was specifically for the Old Testament, okay? Specifically for the Old Testament, okay? But also too, yeah, this does not apply for us today. The touch not mine anointed, uh, mine anointed and do my prophets no harm, okay? Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. That does not pertain for us today. Okay? It does not. But now let's close this video on this. I, 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 I shut my two <laughs> scriptures here. Go to Deuteronomy. Let's remember this. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let us remember. Let us remember this. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 35 on to verse 43. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 35 on to verse 43. <clears throat> To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods? their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat of the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I am he. Oh boy. Didn't our Lord Jesus Christ say, Unless you believe I am he, you shall die in your sins. Meaning, um, Jesus Christ is God the Father. <clears throat> See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine, en to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captives, from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. Okay? Now go to Psalm 49. Psalm 49. Psalm 49. <clears throat> Psalm 49. <clears throat> Verses 6. On to verse 9. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves of the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceaseth forever, that he should still live forever and not see corruption. The redemption of their souls is precious. Precious as what? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Go to Psalm 72. Psalm 72. 
Psalm 72. Psalm 72. And this we have to remember. Psalm 72, verses 13 on to verse 15. He shall spare the poor and needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. <clears throat> and he shall live, and to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba, Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. Look at verse 14. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. Remember, for who touches you touches the apple of mine eye, referring unto Israel. And today in this dispensation, you've got to remember, we are of his bones and of his flesh. Because remember saw, uh, what the Lord said unto Saul, 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 why persecutest thou me? Okay? Remember that. Remember that. Psalm 116. Psalm 116. Psalm 116. Come on, fingers work with me. <clears throat> Psalm 116. <clears throat> Verses 12 under verse 19. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, Truly I am thy servant, I am thy servant, and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the, sacrifices of, the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem. Praise ye, Lord. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Verse 19. So see, it was said in under the law, in the book of Deuteronomy, and it's being mentioned right here in the book of Romans, which is doctrine for us today in this dispensation. What does that mean? Boop. Crosses dispensational lines. God is a God of judgment. God is a God of vengeance. Okay? Dearly beloved. Romans 12, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Let's read verses 20 and 21. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our, in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Knowing, brethren beloved, 
your election of God. And it's not, it's not that, uh, it's not Calvinism. Okay? The way of the cross was what the Lord elected. <clears throat> you come to him broken and contrite, having godly sorrow, believing on him, and in your brokenness, you call on the name of the Lord. Okay? Okay? You are in the elect, which he has chosen the way of the cross. See? It's not this, it's not this stupid Calvinism stuff. Okay? Okay? I believe that has been shown you in several videos. Which ones? I cannot remember. Okay? So just remember. It's not the wicked elected non-elective Calvinism. All right? Let's continue. For our gospel came not on to you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance. And ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not speak anything. For they themselves shew of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. God's judgment. The time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And now, go to Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. Can you handle one more? Hmm? Revelation chapter 18. Now, Revelation chapter 7 is talking about Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And if you study this, you'll see that it's actually talking about the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, the Roman Catholic Church. Not America, not Israel, not Islam, Roman Catholicism. Okay? But Revelation chapter 18. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having a great, having great power. And the earth was lightened, lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Look at all the nations of the earth right now that go and bow to the Pope. Look at them. They're bowing to the Pope Francis, the Jesuit. Okay, let's continue. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Are you looking at that? Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no, and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Talking about the Roman Catholic Church. 
Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for, for the fear of her torment, torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and of iron and marble. Referring on to the treasures of Roman Catholicism, which the Templars, which are uh, which have morphed into the Masons, okay, okay, guardians of the treasures, that kind of stuff. Talking about all the wealth of Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and if I'm not mistaken one of only two times that the word slaves appear in the authorized version of the scriptures. And souls of men and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. And all things which are dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Uh, is it any book describing Roman Catholicism? Okay. <coughs> <coughs> For in one hour so great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she is made desolate. For all the building up the work of Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism has done. In one hour, after centuries of what the whore has done, Mystery Babylon the Great, Roman Catholicism, the Roman Catholic Church has done. It's going to be all brought to naught in just one hour. Verse 20, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeteers shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be, Masons, <laughs> shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were thy great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And for those playing the home game, 
The word sorceries there is from a Greek word, pharmakeia, which means um, druggists, magic potions. Pharmakeia is where they derive the word pharmacy from. Uh, vaccine is not in the scriptures. No. But sorcery and witchcraft is. What do you think that vaccine is, dear friend? For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints. And of all that were slain upon the earth. Now, over history, over the course of history, who hath killed prophets and saints and of all that were slain upon the earth? Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism. You read Fox's Book of Martyrs. It was Roman Catholicism. It's not Jerusalem. Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm does not apply for us today in this dispensation. But we do have to keep in mind that God is a God of vengeance and he is going to recompense those that have persecuted his body, the church. Okay? You have to remember that. So, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. It was specifically for the establishment of the kingdom of Israel and for Abraham being brought, you know, for his seed and that kind of stuff like that within the Old Testament. Not for today. Because <laughs> look at what, look at the persecution. They killed the prophets. And today, look at what Roman Catholicism has done unto the church of the living God. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs sometime. Get the picture. And of course the Catholics say, oh, that's propaganda, that's a lie. No, no, no. So, that is going to be it. That is going to be it. Took me quite a while to put this all together. Hopefully, hopefully this answers your questions. Those of you that have asked me of this, um, I told you all this was going to be very, very big. Didn't lie to you, did I? <laughs> Tired. I've been, I started doing this at 1130 in the morning, my time here. Now it's 512 in the afternoon. So I'm going to go. My wife is making um, spaghetti tonight. Yay. So, thank you unto all of you. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be magnified. Thank you so much for watching any of this, if you do. And we will see you in the next video. Whenever that will be. We love you. Bye-bye.